Hi, I'm Peter Singer, and I want to talk to you today about fishes. I've been involved in the animal movement for uh, more than 45 years now. I wrote Animal Liberation back in 1975, and I focused mostly on vertebrate animals and specifically on vertebrate land-based animals, the animals who are in factory farms like pigs and cows and chickens, partly because I thought that they were the ones that people could most relate to and we could make the most impact on them. But in recent years, I've been thinking more about the suffering that we inflict on fishes and on other aquatic animals, because they're also sentient beings. They can also suffer. And in terms of the numbers of animals affected, they just overwhelm all of the land-based animals who we inflict suffering on, even though that's a very large number, maybe something like 70 billion land-based animals used uh, for food and mostly in factory farms each year. But as far as fishes are concerned, the estimates range from 1,000 to 3,000 billion animals each year. In other words, in American terminology, one to three trillion animals each year. And uh, some of them, of course, do have lives without human interference. They're the wild caught animals who live in the sea until they are trapped in a net or hooked on a line. But when that happens, they may suffer hours of agony. Uh, deep sea fish hauled to the surface will suffer from decompression and essentially their internal organs will explode inside them as they're hauled up towards the surface. Uh, other fish may be caught on long lines, lines uh, kilometers long that are dragged out behind trawlers um, and they may be hooked on those lines and dragged for uh, a long time, for many hours. Uh, through their sensitive lips. Um, others will be caught in nets that are, uh, again, vast long nets that are essentially strip mining the oceans, and they may be caught in them also for not just hours, but even days. So the suffering of wild caught fish is huge when you consider the numbers. And as far as uh, fish farming is concerned, we again have millions of animals, sentient beings, trapped in incredible confinement, uh, imprisoned really in nets. We don't fully understand the stresses that they are feeling. And they too are generally not killed in a humane way. Humane slaughter for fish is, is very rare. It's just being experimented with in, in some countries at this stage. Why do we ignore all of this? Why are we pretty much indifferent to the suffering of, of fish in the oceans? Well, I think it's because uh, we think of them as uh, cold, slimy. Uh, we don't, we're not attracted to them in the way that we are attracted to uh, pigs, cows, for example. So I think that uh, that's a major factor. They can't vocalize. Uh, we don't hear their cries as they're suffering, that's another factor. And we just lump them all together as fish, as if somehow fish are all inferior to us. Whereas in fact, there are more species of, different species of fish than there are of land-based vertebrates. So the difference between different species of fish in both in evolutionary sense and uh, in terms of, of their differences might be greater than the differences between humans like us and mice, for instance. Uh, so uh, they are very varied, and it's reasonable to think that they're varied in their capacities to understand and feel pain and know what's going on. Uh, but it seems that they're, you know, like other vertebrates, they are all sentient beings. And if we are looking at aquatic animals, in fact, there are invertebrates who are clearly sentient beings as well. Uh, the octopus and squid, cuttlefish, are uh, also killed uh, in large numbers for human consumption. Uh, and if you doubt the intelligence of an octopus, just go to YouTube and Google uh, octopus and look at some videos of how octopuses can solve novel problems that they've never been presented to. 
So I'm making this video to invite you to join the campaign uh, to end fishing. Uh, another perspective on fishes is uh, what we're asking people to take. It's going to be a long struggle, I know, because of people's lack of commitment and concern, but uh, we have to start somewhere. If we don't start now, when should we start? So there are organizations starting to take seriously the suffering of fish. Uh, I hope you'll join them and join their campaign to get us and get the whole world to think again about the suffering we're inflicting on fish. And at least for those of us who have alternatives to eat, those of us in affluent countries who have uh, available vegan diet that can nourish us well, uh, please let's cut fish from our diet along with other animals who can suffer. And hopefully eventually a new day will dawn in which we cease to exploit aquatic sentient beings as well, of course, as terrestrial animals. Thanks for listening. Because their farming and slaughtering conditions cause them to suffer, because eating meat isn't necessary, because sentient beings shouldn't be mistreated or killed unnecessarily, farming, fishing, and hunting animals for their flesh as well as selling and eating animal flesh should be abolished. Fish, cephalopods, and crustaceans are absolutely unprotected. Fishing and aquaculture farms make thousands of billions of victims each year. They concern almost 97% of the animals killed for their flesh. From an ethical point of view, we must work to ban fisheries and aquaculture farms. Join the campaign and participate in the World Day for the End of Fishing. Take part for a better world.